I'm James Bolden, I'm Policy Officer at Transport for Greater Manchester and um, I'm a policy lead on um, ageing and old people and transport um, and I've been working with the GM Ageing Hub and um, GM One Persons Network for um, just, just about uh, eight, 18 months a, a, a year. Um, and it's been quite a challenge, well 2018 was quite a difficult year for transport, um, often is, but um, there's some things out of our control, some things within our control. So there was rail chaos on the trains that some of you may experience, um, and our mayor has been very vocal about. Uh, there's been some busy major city centre road works that have caused a lot of congestion, really vital road works, but um, no easy way to do them, but it is, has caused a lot of problems. And then um, even things like um, the drones causing chaos at Gatwick, at Gatwick Airport, there's been lots of challenges last year. But there were lots of good things as well, um, and, and lots of positive things that we've done in terms of um, trying to help remove some of the barriers that old people face with transport. So I think it's about a year ago that there's um, a, a old person's network event here, which did any of you attend that? Yeah. There? A few people there. So I think our, our Mayor Andy Burnham was, was there to, to speak and to listen to people, and uh, our Director of Customer from um, Transport for Greater Manchester, Stephen Rhodes, attended. And they said it was great just to get out and just to hear some of the real challenges that old people face with transport, not just vehicle, you know, about buses and, and trams and trains, but just getting from your doorstep to the bus stop. Because if you can't get to the bus stop, you can't get them there, no matter how accessible the bus is, um, you can't get there in the first place. And I think there's a lot of really useful feedback um, that's, that's start to influence some of the things some of the way that we're thinking now and some of the things that we're doing and planning to take in the future. So this is just a reminder of the recommendations from the report that the Old Person Network put together. Um, there were recommendations about uh, improving transport mapping to make sure it's clearer for old people to make sure it shows um, you know, where old people are well served by transport and where people's potential for people to be socially isolated. The recommendation about quality impact assessments when we're making changes to the bus network in a, in a future where we have greater control of the bus network, which we, we don't have that much control at the moment. Um, a recommendation about investment in <coughs> transport, the ring and ride service, about transport being designed according to age-friendly principles, so it's from the start you get it right, you're not looking to correct problems when they've already appeared. Raising awareness of some of the options and the support that's available for older people in terms of transport, because it's, what came out was that there's lots of things that we do offer that people just aren't aware of. And um, we want the transport maps to be more accessible information about you know, where people can um, access things such as hospitals, health centres, um, the transport map should have that kind of information on as well, as a recommendation. A recommendation that all people want to be more involved in transport decisions. There should be more volunteer lift schemes to help people to get about. Um, staff training for people, for transport staff who work in frontline services. And then also digital training so people can, so all people can um, you know, access things like uh, phone apps and and information online so they're more aware of the, the transport options that they have at their disposal. So in 2018, um, one of the first things we did beginning this year is we jointly commissioned um, an age family transport study <coughs> with the Greater Manchester Combined Authority. And um, there was a guy called Dr. Charles Musselwhite who um, he came and presented um, here earlier this year, Liz, didn't he? It was a, yeah, was a right. Centre for Aging, better was it all, Ambition for Aging events, that's right, right, yeah. And um, Charles has studied, Charles is a sort of expert in um, old people and transport and mobility, and so he drew on a lot of the research that he's done over the years, but he also did um, a whole range of workshops across Greater Manchester, Tameside, Bolton, Very Old, and Wigan, Salford, as well as the, the event that the Old Persons Network um, hosted and asked old people what the barriers they faced to get to out and about and, and you know, what, what were the priority issues for them to be, to be addressed. I mean, what, and what comes out of this is that obviously not all old people are the same. You all have different 
um, needs, different priorities, and of course, um, a lot of the things that old people might see as a priority for transport aren't just a priority for older people. If we can address some of these barriers and concerns, then we can have a better transport network for everyone. So there's a number of recommendations that were made. <clears throat> and they were about, again, transport staff should be more understanding, better informed about what old people's issues are. Bus drivers, um, people, the people in travel shops and interchanges. I'll speak a bit more about that later. Again, getting the old people more involved in transport planning and design. <coughs> How can other sectors help manage transport demand better? I think Liz was just talking about um, in your report about the difficulty that older people often face getting to um, medical appointments, particularly when they're early in the morning, before half nine when, when the free bus pass kicks in. And some of that's about working with the health service to say, can they have better, they have this, this choose and book policy that isn't widely um, known about and isn't widely implemented. But giving people more choice about when they have their appointments, so they can use to you, you, using your bus pass to get there. Then it's later in the day when you can when you can use it. And community resources and support. Again, this is about it's just as much it's about um, when people get out and about. They need to know that they might be somewhere to rest, somewhere to sit down. That maybe there's there's access to a toilet. So schemes like the um, take a seat campaign and the um, so community toilet campaigns that have been that have been out and about there, they're just as important to make sure they're not barriers to, to people to old people and um, getting out and about. And finally, demonstrated communities. So this was about pilot projects to to try and remove some of the barriers that old people face. So things like um, so, you know how how can we use school buses better? School buses are used for only a certain part of the day. But then sit and can often sit dormant for the most for most of the day. Can they be can they, could they be used for getting old people to, to local services or recreation activities? So since that report was established this year, we've made some progress in a number of areas. We've had a disability design reference group for um, 10 years now, and it's a well-established group that's done some great work, primarily on the Metrolink network, to make sure that our trams and our stops are all fully accessible. But we're now starting to expand that, the role of that committee. So now that they're, they're, they're consulted on things like um, our, the interchanges and bus stations that we did, that we, that we built, and Wigan Bus Station was opened um, earlier this year, and it's a great example of a really um, accessible um, bus station that's, that's open and, um, and people friendly, not just about how, how easy you can get the buses in and out. And they've also been involved in looking at the design of the website. One thing we're looking to in future is it's not just about disability and impairment, but just is more broadly about the, the issues that older people face. Rail station accessibility. So our rail stations in Greater Manchester, many of which are you know over 100 years old, and so they're not designed for the t today's um, mobility and accessibility standards. And it's um, it's shameful really that only around half of our stations are currently step-free access. So we're looking to change that. And there's a government um, pot of money, 300 million, that's for the whole country. Um, but we've put a bid in to try and upgrade 10 of our stations. So they've got step, step free access. So the stations we've applied for are in uh, the Walkden, Twinton, Daisy Hill, Erlen, Reddish North, Hindley, Bryn, Flowery Field, uh, Newton for Hyde and Levenshume. And we hope to hear about those stations um, in March, whether we get we're, we're successful with that funding. But we'd be very disappointed if we didn't get the majority of those stations. <coughs> Concessionary travel, well we've continued to extend the national concessionary bus pass so it covers tram and train in Greater Manchester. And another thing that we introduced earlier this year was uh, the older per old women's concessionary pass. And that was following the mayoral pl pledge that he wanted to help some of the women who'd been most affected by the pension age changes. And so it was only a small 
group of women who were eligible for it, um, but they were some of the women who, who, who'd been given the least notice about the changes and were having the biggest impact on, on, the, on the age change. In September, we, offered the, we, we um, launched the Please Offer Me a Seat campaign, and that's a badge that you can wear if you um, are travelling on public transport and you, you want people to know um, that you, need to, you might need to sit down for, for all or part of the journey. It's been around 1,600 badges so far. You don't need medical evidence or anything to, to apply for it. Um, you can get them from travel shops, but you can also ring up um, Transport for Greater Manchester and, and order them. And dementia awareness. So we have about around 170 staff who work for Transport for Greater Manchester in bus stations, interchanges, and our travel shops. And they've all now had the dementia awareness um, training. And they also, we have these um, guardian angel scheme, which is about if um, it's a wristband that people with dementia can wear. And it, you can use your phone to pick up a contact number. So that that person presents as being confused or lost, and you're able to help them. We also have a walking festival every year to encourage people to walk and, we, and part of that we had a number of dementia friendly walks. And our, the Alzheimer's Society is a TFGM nominated charity for this year as well. So we're making good progress with our own staff but I think one thing that we'd like to do is look at what can we do to promote that kind of training and awareness to private operators, to bus operators, to bus drivers and to the tram, to the tram network as well. And whether we just how can we broaden it so it's not just about dementia but again it's also about the broader issues and barriers that old people face. We can't claim any credit for this but I thought this was a great age friendly bus guide that was um, put together by the Bolton um, Ambition for Aging group. Um, it's just common sense really, show courtesy and respect to all passengers, you shouldn't really need to tell anyone that should you? But I think that those are the kind of rules that we need to promote and, and so we can have more age-friendly services. And bus reform. I think there's a lot of problems with our bus network at the moment and as a result we're seeing patronage of, of, of buses um, declining year on year. There's now 140 million fewer journeys on Greater Manchester buses than there were 30 years ago. It's a very confusing network, you've got different operators, different standards of bus, some accessible, some not, confusing ticketing. Um, and the frustration at Transport for Greater Manchester is we, we have limited control over that at the moment, we only run about 20% of them and 80% of them are run by private operators. But we now have new powers that rest with our Mayor for reform of the bus network and that's something we're assessing at the moment to see is there a case for us to have greater power over local bus services. So the like in London, we could have complete control over fares, ticketing, routes, frequencies, vehicles and quality standards. Because buses are really important because you might hear in the press more about chaos on the, on the train or on the tram. Buses don't always get a lot of um, coverage in the press. But actually, 80% of public transport journeys are on the bus and they're absolutely vital to people getting around, and particularly to old people. And the ring and ride service. I think we know we're well aware of its flaws, and we're always working to improve it. Um, but it's still a well used service, and we're investing in, I think it's around 20 to 30 new vehicles. <coughs> So something that was, I thought was really interesting was um, the safe driving course that our Drive Safe team now run. And this is a free course that's been piloted in Stockport at the moment for older drivers. And it's, it's primarily about um, making sure that older drivers feel confident on the road, but also giving them tips about you know, fuel efficiency and, and car maintenance. But it's also looking at things like what are the, what are the alternatives might be to driving. Because um, what we do find is that when old people, if, if when they get a tip past, uh, in the event that they have to give up driving, 
that often it can result in um, their health going downhill very quickly because of social isolation um, amongst other things. But what we see is that the people give up driving at an earlier age before they're made to and start to transition to using public transport often find that the, the health goals are much better. And so whilst we want older people to feel safe when they're driving, we also want to be able to let them know about what the alternatives might be. And finally, the main to, to move was um, Chris Baldwin is our walking and cycling commissioner. And he launched this plan. It was actually just over a year ago, <coughs> made to move. It's a 15-step plan to transform Greater Manchester in the way we move about. But we're encouraging much more cycling and walking so that we have a healthier, we can tackle congestion, we can tackle inactivity, obesity, a whole range of conditions that we can get more people walking and cycling. But what he said was that it's, it shouldn't take an act of bravery to cross the road. So people will only walk or cycle if they feel safe to do so. So one of his ambitions is for a, what he called his B-Lines project, which is a thousand miles of, of cycling and walking infrastructure. And 160 million has been allocated to that so far. And I think, this, I think crossing times is something that Liz picked up earlier in the health, and I'm gonna talk a, bit, a little bit more about that in a minute. So what next? Well, so we've done some good work this year, um, but from the rec some of the recommendations that came from the Old Persons Network and from um, the study that we commissioned is still to be implemented. So we've committed to coming up with a, a draft age friendly <coughs> transport plan and action plan. And these are sort of the 10 priorities that we've identified so far. So at the top of the list is involving older people. We know we need to do more to involve older people in transport planning. But also it's things like um, the Left Tune Inspire project where there was the, the great graffiti, I think it was called, where they went out and biodegradable spray paint of any hazards, trip hazards on the pavement. Really we need to sort the pavements out, or you know, local councils do. But, one, but, but, but an alternative, obviously, in the meantime, is to just simply highlight where those trip hazards are so that they don't become more of an issue. <coughs> Improving and promoting transport accessibility. So we have some really good schemes. Um, we have aids, things like bus hailers, people with visually, who are visually impaired, so you can call the bus. Um, but people don't always know about, we really need to promote those things. And we need to improve accessibility, and so things like the rail, rail stations and how, how accessible our buses are. Can rest concessionary travel. That we know how important it is, but I think it's really important when in the time of um, local authority cuts that we really have all the evidence there to show how important and vital the concessionary pass is for all people. So that if anyone decides to look at it, we've got the evidence there to say this is, this is the difference that it makes to people's lives. Working with the health sector. So it's things like, you know, okay, you might not be able to use your concessionary pass before half nine to get to an appointment. Can we work with the health sector so that you can have more um, choice about when your appointments are? Age-friendly transport staff. Well, we've covered that. But I think the thing to me is that, again, it's, it's common sense, isn't it? It's, it's, you shouldn't have to train people to, on, about giving people patience, about listening to people. Um, it's it's just cu good customer service, really. But it's not. But bus drivers, <laughs> taxi drivers, people in the transport world don't always get it right, and so we need to do more to improve that. Age-friendly buses. That's something we think we can do more about through bus reform. Ring and ride review. We always need to see what more we can do to, to address some of the issues with that service. Supporting all the drivers. I think the Stockport pilots are really good to start, but what more can we do in that area? Age-friendly crossings is something I think I really want to do about. We need to think and talk about moving away from installing Pelican crossings, which have fixed time. And that time is set by um, guidance from the Department of Transport. It says that people should be able to walking at 1.2 metres per second. Well, actually, only around 10% of people over the age of 60 can walk at that speed. So, it's, so that's that. So we need to stop 
we need to retime those those signals where it's possible. But also we need to move to installing more things like puffin and tubing crossings because they have infrared technology which can sense when someone is still on the road to give them more people time to cross. And finally the take a seats in the community toilet schemes. I think they've really been really successful, but what more can we do to promote them? Because again, there's still a barrier to people getting out of the bounds of people if, if people can't have the confidence to there's someone to rest or someone to um, spend a penny. And that's it. Thank you.